In this video, we're going to focus on the differences between Canvas and model-driven applications for Power Apps. So stay tuned. Welcome back. If you've been using Power Apps for a little while, or if you're brand new to Power Apps, you may be familiar with this term model-driven applications and Canvas applications, but not know the specifics about how they're different. Well, that's what this video is all about. I wanted to create this quick video to show the differences and talk about high level, when would you build one versus the other? So let's start with Canvas applications, which is the most common application type we see inside of Power Apps. Well, Canvas applications are geared at pixel perfect kind of control of your application. So it comes in two flavors. You can build a, a wide uh, tablet application or a phone application. And of course, it works on the, on the PC, inside of SharePoint, and also on other devices as well. So this is uh, one of the key differentiators. If you want to have pixel perfect kind of control in a WYSIWYG environment, then that's where it's going to make sense for a Canvas application. It also gives you control to connect to multiple data sources that you wish. So how about these model-driven applications? So model-driven applications, we start with data first, and that data live in the, lives in a very specific place. The, da the data is gonna live in a common data services platform, which essentially is going to be the same database that Dynamics 365 uses. It uses the Dynamics 365 customer engagement model by default. Now, we start with the data model, and then we build out from there. And it's, a, it's ideal for visualizing really complex business processes. So if you want to go through and say, all right, I'm onboarding a new employee. I'm going to do this, then do this, then do this, and I'm going to visualize that very carefully, that's where model-driven applications fit the best. It's very similar to developing in Apex for uh, Salesforce.com developers. So I mentioned this term, common data services. What is this term? Well, we can connect to common data services easily through things like uh, Canvas applications or through a model-driven application. But in a model-driven application, it's much easier to connect to uh, the CDS model. So CDS common data services is a layer that connects to, to things like Dynamics for one, on one side and to Power Apps on the other side and Flow and all those kind of things. So if I were to make a data change and point to a record inside of a product table, for example, it would immediately change in all those different pieces that are connecting to it. So it's about how, we, how the difference is there. So for building a, a traditional Canvas application without CDS, we would what we do first. We would go ahead, we go through and create a database. We then would go through and create a connection database, load that database up, create our tables inside of that. We don't have to worry about that with CDS and with model-driven applications. What we can do is we can look through a catalog of tables that are already created for you. And when you create that CDS database, it includes that Azure database for you. Now, right now, it's Azure DB, but that might change someday. It doesn't only really matter. It's abstract to you. So much like Salesforce or Dynamics, it has things like products, employees, price books, and opportunities, and contacts, and all those kind of things. So if you want to extend it, you can do that as well. But in this case, we don't have to worry about all those common systems. Like, so if I want to point to an employee table, I just check the employee table, and now I can edit and have all those operations, the create, read, update, the CRUD operations for me automatically. All those business rules are going to apply no matter what the application type is. So if I happen to be building a Canvas application connecting to the CDS, and I update a single row that has a whole bunch of workflows built on it, it's going to kick off that was workflows just like I was in a model-driven application. So the same kind of workflows are going to apply to both. It has role-level security built into it, as well as validation of those rows as well. Now, when I say role-level security, I mean you may go ahead and edit this row, you may go ahead and view the row, and you may not do anything at all with the row. So those are kind of things that, that role-level security is going to give us access to. So CDS, to keep in mind, it's a way of kickstarting your application. You know you're going to build a whole bunch of applications that are all going to need employee tables and are all going to need uh, uh, opportunities and contacts and all customers and all those kind of things. That's where CDS really excels. And just because you may not want to be on a, on a model-driven application, it doesn't matter. You can still use CDS if you want to. Matter of fact, here's the differences on the licensing front. So model-driven applications require that you have a P2 license. 
That license typically comes with Dynamics also, so if you have Dynamics, chances are you have this P2 license. The P1 plan, the plan uh, here on the left side, is for uh, uh, any kind of Canvas application. Now, it, uh, now the P1 plan uh, it gives you access to the premium connectors, and one of those premium connectors is the Common Data Services. So there's also one more license type, it's Power Apps for Office, that only can do Canvas applications, just like P1, but it cannot connect to those premium connectors at this time. So those are the, the three different license types. Chances are, if you have an Office 365 subscription, you also have the Power Apps for Office subscription as well. So let's, let's now view a few of the differences between these applications so you can kind of see in, in real world how these actually operate and what does it mean for you. So let me open up our, my PC here and what we're seeing here is a good old classic Canvas application in a WYSIWYG environment. Now I'm not going to walk through actually creating an app here since you have a lot of other videos on actually creating apps with Canvas and with uh, other ones as well. But you'll just notice a whole slew of controls over here. I can go ahead and drag and drop controls up top here by just going to insert and you'll see all my controls, my buttons and all those kind of things inside of there. Now, inside of a model-driven application, how does it look different? Well, first of all, you'll notice that when I, when I open up Power Apps, on the left is this notion called data. And that data gives you access to all these common entities you're seeing right here. Now, those common entities can be extended. You can also create your own entity in that as well. But essentially behind the scenes, there's an Azure database that, that's powering all of this. So I don't need to go and license a separate database with this. It's all included. And that database can be pretty big if you wanted to also. So these are the common elements. You'll see things like employees and all those. What you really want to be look for is the word standard here. And that will tell us that we can actually use that with the P1 and P2 plan. Now, building an app on this is basically when I go and actually create the brand new app, it looks quite different, doesn't it? In this case, it's going to feel more like developing an app inside of Dynamics or inside of Salesforce.com. In this case, I point to the entity that I want to go to, and I point as I drag dashboards over. Let's imagine I want to see uh, um, appointments, for example. I just check that entity, and that would basically create that CRUD operation for me automatically. And you do not have that pixel perfect control. So it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just different. Now, one thing to note here is if I do change a row here, it's going to change in both application types because they're both connecting to the same database if I chose common data services for that. So what do these look like then? So again, for, mo for uh, Canvas applications, you have pixel perfect kind of control. So as I go through here again, and I click on this, I want to see the specs on it, for example. I want to go ahead and place an order on it. You have pixel perfect kind of control, and I had to build all this very, very manual process to do this. So it took it can take some time to do. Now, this workflow you're seeing right here for this, this, this guy, this Canvas application, is a manual workflow we created by lines and graphics and having to do it all manually inside of our own table structure inside of Azure. So I had a lot of coding went into this. So how do we do this in a model-driven application? Well, let's look at the apps there. In this case, we're seeing at the same kind of workflow inside of a model-driven application. This business process you're seeing up top where I want to have a very tight business process can be done through a very, very easy interface. And it enforces that, that I can't go any farther with the supplier until I go ahead and get the full contact information for that supplier. And then I go through and I can review the proposals, I can see the contacts, then I can actually onboard them. So for employee onboarding processes, this is a great option because there already is an employee entity, then you can have that workflow for onboarding that employee, for offboarding that employee, for paying that employee, all those kind of things can be work business processes like you're seeing up top. Now, you're seeing a, a few things about this. If I go over this app here in this case, you're seeing that we it is pretty. And we have some dashboards up top, some reports up top, and you'll notice the graphic up top, Dynamics 365. So it is inside of that Dynamics ecosystem that we're building these applications. That's why if you have a Dynamics license, you, chances are you already have this already. One thing you'll note though is I, I get this grid right here this, this with for CRUD operations where I can do that create, read, update. And as I'm looking at these, these vehicle requests, if I click on one, it's not a very pretty environment in some cases. You can make it prettier and you can actually embed Canvas applications into this also if you wanted to kind of have that blended hybrid approach. But in this case, we don't, from a core functionality, this looks kind of ugly, right? Uh, and we can make changes here, you know, as we make changes, hit the save button, it kicks off workflows and all that. 
but it's super, super simple to build. So if you have that common data services data or you're using uh, Dynamics already, 365 already, this is a great option for you. If you don't want to have to go through and create the tables I showed you before back in this previous screen right here, then common data services is probably a good option for you. Look at the data here and see if there's com com some common data tables that might fit your model. It's a great option. It also gives you additional really cool things for migrating these tables from environment to environment or packaging up and sending it to a customer also. So these are some, some differentiators between the two environments. So again, the, the, the big key element here is Canvas applications are just different, right? They're, the two of them are different. One isn't right or wrong. Canvas applications, though, give you pixel-perfect kind of control. They may require a little more work in some cases, but what you get out of them is really beautiful in many cases. Uh, where model-driven applications are going to require the P2 license, and it uh, does not give you that, that really fine-tooth control of things. Now, you can blend the applications together to get that fine-tooth control if you want to also. The licensing difference is a big deal, though, also. The P2 license is about four times more expensive than the P1 license. But if you have Dynamics, chances are it's already included. Well, I hope this kind of helps you kind of create some differentiators between the two environments. Uh, Model-driven applications and, and Canvas applications can both use that common data service and that common data model uh, through connector or inherently with model-driven applications. All right, stay tuned for our next video. And you can find this as part of our other classes at pragmaticworks.com or let us build an application for you at pragmaticworks.com also. Have a great day and thanks for watching this video.